Well, good morning, everyone. This is Linda, and it's Friday morning. We still have that cloud hanging over us, but um, let's just hope that we get a breath of wind, a breath, not a big breath, but just a little breath, start blowing some of this away so we can at least see the sun. I know that would do, that would be a balm to our souls to see the sun. Well, my friends, we're here this morning to do our daily devotion for individuals and families. We start on page 137 of the Book of Common Prayer. If you don't have a Book of Common Prayer, that's okay. Just hang in with me and listen and enjoy. And as always, we start off in the morning with a reading from Psalm 51. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And this morning we continue with the gospel story uh, in John. And um, the past few mornings we've been reading the build-up to what's going to happen today. Um, today is the raising of Lazarus. The gospel according to John. Now, Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews, who had been with Mary in the house comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn her brother there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of the others said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go gospel of the Lord. So, a lot of parallels in this uh, gospel reading this morning, of course, for Jesus in his own life. So, just a little bit of a backstory. So, prior to Jesus returning to Bethany, he had been down across the Jordan at the spot where John the Baptism of John the Baptist was baptizing in those early days. This spot 
is actually on the east bank of the Jordan River and is called Bethany beyond the Jordan. The Jordan River creates a border between what is now Israel-Palestine and the country of Jordan. Well, Jesus was down there because there had been trouble in Jerusalem and his opponents wanted to stone him. They were unable to seize him and he escaped from their grasp. So he headed down toward the river, by the river, to sort of lay low for a while. And then while down at the river, he gets the word about Lazarus. Jesus knows what is going to transpire and does not rush back to the home of this family that he loves. Like he's done before when told of an illness or an ailment, he rushes in. Even his disciples question his. They also question the logic of returning to a place where he was almost stoned to death. You see, the town of Bethany, where Mary, Martha, and Lazarus lived, is only about two miles from Jerusalem. So if you can picture the old city of Jerusalem in your mind with the gold dome and the wall around it, then there's the Kidron Valley, and then up the other side of the valley, you come to the Garden of Gethsemane, and you keep on going up the Mount of Olives. And over the top of the Mount of Olives, going down the other side, is the town of Bethany. So he's basically returning to the thick of the trouble. So in these times, in these times now though, the town of Bethany is on the Palestinian side of the wall of separation. You have to then cross through the checkpoints and get clearance to continue on. So you have to leave Jerusalem and go out and around to the hole of the, the wall, the, the crossing in the wall, and then go through and then back around to Bethany. Well, meanwhile, Jesus encounters Martha on the road as he's heading toward their house, and she's almost chastising him about not getting there in time. He questions her about her faith in him. We have the exchange about Jesus saying, her brother will live again, and she answers with, he will rise on the last day. Jesus then reveals himself. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? And Martha now leaves to bring her sister to this place where Jesus is. And all of the mourners that are gathered in the house leave with her to follow the sisters, and they all encounter Jesus. He sees them all weeping. John tells us in his gospel that Jesus was deeply moved. Jesus is revealing his human side by grieving and actually weeping with this assembled crowd. But there are a few in this crowd on the periphery saying to themselves, if he could restore sight to that blind man, couldn't he have prevented Lazarus from dying from his death? Well, Jesus asks where they have laid Lazarus, and they all head to the tomb. He directs the crowd to take away the stone. Martha, always the practical one, talks about days being dead and the bad odor. And now he reveals his true intent for waiting. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And then he prays to his father. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. And then Jesus stands in front of the tomb with the stone rolled away and calls out, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus, who believes in Jesus and is the Messiah, he hears his master's voice. He hears his shepherd's voice. And of course, like a good sheep, he follows his directions and he emerges. One irony of this situation 
by giving life to Lazarus, he sets in motion the sequence of events that will lead to his crucifixion. With Lazarus, we have an actual resuscitation. In a short while, we will have a resurrection. The parallels are clear with Lazarus and Jesus. We have a tomb. We have a stone rolled away. We have folks looking into the tomb. And we have grave cloths, or grave clothes. We have Lazarus, who emerges still wearing his. And at the resurrection, when the women look in, they see the grave clothes lying on the slab where he had been laid. And Lazarus, he lives until his last day, before he is then resurrected. And Jesus lives and walks among his disciples after his resurrection until his ascension. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And now let's gather and collect ourselves. I know lots of our hearts are heavy right now. If only we had a breath of wind to blow some of this gray away. But let us pray for our leaders across the nation, the state, the county, and our town that they make decisions for us in our best interests so that we can be restored to our lives. We're coming through such a long time of hibernation and separation. And I know the day will come when we will emerge from this like Lazarus emerges from his tomb. But boy, the waiting is hard. I must confess, the waiting is hard. So as Sally has reminded us, and I was reminded this morning of a note from a friend from our book group, we must stay connected to each other. And I know some of us, we have a Zoom every day, but you know, at least we get to see each other. And we see our faces and we see our body language and our facial expressions and we hear our voices as we see our faces. And that's important. Um, and we are doing some uh, live abbreviated Eucharist moss, or mass in the moss room. That's a special, special thing um, where a few of us gather in there together in this beautiful space. It's so unique and unusual. Uh, last Sunday, we were out at the Preston's farm. Again, a beautiful space overlooking God's creation. Um, when this smoke cloud lifts, we will try to uh, hopefully return there so we can gather together. Yesterday, we had an ECW luncheon at the Murphy's home inside because the air quality is not good. But Katie's home is large enough, so we were all spread apart. So it was good. It's just so good to be together. It really is a bomb to Gilead or the bomb of Gilead, I should say, a uh, bomb for our souls that we do see each other. So this morning, in our prayers and concerns, we're going to pray especially for those John, Aidan, Autumn, Daisy, John, David, Deborah, Sylvan, Robin, Marjorie, Patricia, Bernie, Anne, Sherry, Tammy, Suzanne and Richard, Mary, Becky, Leah, Alice, Juanice, Alicia, Ginny, Mike, Lisa, and Max. And please add your intercessions for your own prayers and for the people who are on your hearts this morning. I pray especially for my good, good friend, Mary. And now let us say together the Lord's Prayer which fell on the floor, sorry. 
The prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our closing collect, which will send us out today. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for being with me. And have a good day. Stay inside. It's not safe to be out. This air quality is not good. So on that note, my friends, be well. And I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Maybe mass in the moss room. All right. Thank you so much. So long.